Today on Getting Greener, I am so excited to be talking to Tom Zaki, the founder of TerraCycle. They're a global leader in recycling who are eliminating the idea of waste. But most of us Aussies probably don't know, Tom's also a TV star. He produced and starred in a three season reality TV series about his business, TerraCycle, called Human Resources. Thank you for calling TerraCycle. Can I help you? Uh, no, sir. Unfortunately, we do not sell bikes. We're on our way to recycle anything, no matter what. Anything. Oh my God, this is disgusting. This is... Hey, Tom, mate, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Much appreciated. Now, look, before we talk TerraCycle, I am fascinated about the TV series you pulled together. Human resources. I've watched a couple of clips and it is, I was sitting there pissing myself laughing the whole time. I'm glad. <laughs> Being a founder of a business that wants to change the world, you know, focus is paramount. And I would have thought that creating something like this would have just been the exact opposite, a distraction. What was the inspiration behind creating this series? Yeah, it's such a good question. And, and on the surface, yeah, you have to watch out about, you know, things distracting. But, you know, for us, we really believe in this concept of negative cost marketing, which is the thesis of, you know, why pay to be the advertising when you can pay to be the content. So if you just peel back the TV show from a pure business standpoint, you know, we were being able to make pretty substantial revenue and putting out a massive uh, uh, amount of media on, on, on what we are. And it really helped build our brand at the time. And then of course you get media about having a TV show. So it all sort of self-perpetuates and net net, you know, maybe 5% of our staff were involved in it. And even my own involvement would, was, was more about sort of producing and making sure that like all the messages are coherent with the, how we're trying to project ourselves. And then doing a lot of like the voiceover, which I can film, you know, uh, at odd hours and that sort of thing. So we made it really work to be as least disruptive as possible. Um, and there's funny side thing is like, the folks who are what I would call, you know, there's always the kids at the front, front of the classroom, you know, who are hands always up. And then there's the jokers at the back of the classroom. And even companies have the front of the classroom kids and the back of the classroom kids. It's the back of the classroom kids that are the best characters. So for them, it was great, you know, as well to sort of be seen and, uh, and, and play a, a different role in the organization. Feel the surface there. It's very damp and moist. We're going to take on recycling tampons. Hell no. <laughs> I think this is the key that we have to think about in the entire sustainability movement, right? Is that right now, the sustainability movement, I think, has two major issues, especially on around how it's communicated and how we try to bring everyone in, is that it's uphill, right? And uphill in the sense of it's very complex and dealing with complexity strains the brain. So it's an uphill exercise. And uh, it usually is, is, is like surrounded in sacrifice or you're not a good person and you need to sacrifice your enjoyment to be more sustainable, right? So it's this like, you know, complex, you know, uh, uphill thing and we can't do that. We're going to leave people behind. We have to do the opposite, which is have a chuckle, make people laugh, make it really easy, really approachable, not shrouded in guilt, you know, those sort of things, because there is no time. We're probably well past, like, you know, the point of no return. And so we have to act urgently and we got to bring everyone along quickly. So in doing that, that's, I guess, why you started TerraCycle. Can you tell our viewers a little bit more about the business? Absolutely. So TerraCycle in its core is a garbage company. Uh, but very different than any normal waste management company. So we, first and foremost, uh, focus on how do we collect and recycle those things that are not locally recyclable. So in Australia, you know, doing everything from oral care recycling with, you know, companies like, say, Colgate, all the way to, you know, razor blades and uh, uh, with, you know, companies like Gillette, even like, uh, like coffee capsules with, you know, brands like Lore or Illy and so on. And so we focus on recycling the things you can't put into your normal recycling bins. Then we focus on our second division. How do we integrate waste back into products? Like recently at, I think, Woolies, we had a, uh, uh, a bottle from, I think, Herbal Essence made from ocean plastic, collected, you know, all around, uh, 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 you know, all the water bodies that surround uh, Australia, um, all the way to uh, launching actually early next year, also coincidentally with Woolies, is our third division, Loop, which is all about moving from single use or disposable products to reusable. So imagine your favorite brands uh, now in reusable uh, packaging. You'll be able to buy it at, at, at select stores at uh, Woolies, I think, in Sydney, and then drop it off at a bin uh, once you're done to get your deposits back. So everything we do at TerraCycle is about eliminating or elevating uh, the idea of waste. And how are you seeing the consumers pick that up? Because I saw one thing you guys do. You've got pens made purely from recycled pens. It's a yes. great little story. Do people love it? Absolutely. I think 
So, so one of the nice things about recycling, especially vis-a-vis -vis the topics we mentioned earlier, it's the first lesson we learn in sustainability. I mean, as five-year-olds, we learn reduce, reuse, recycle. That's not a climate change lesson. That's a waste uh, lesson. Noting, by the way, recycling is not the best, right? Reuse is better. And then not buying is the best. And by the way, not buying is not just the best for waste. It's the best overall, right? It is the best action we can take is reduce our consumption. And uh, so it's a simple lesson. Like recycling is an easy place to begin, right? And uh, people really resonate with that. And I think partly because it's simple and it's physical. You can interact with it, right? So turning trash into treasure is effectively yeah. what you're doing. And I've really heard that a lot lately when looking at your business and the fact that you can turn some of the non-recyclable goods or anything into something that's better for the future. What are some of the most obscure things that you've recycled and what have you upcycled them into? Absolutely. So I love the things that also have a little bit of taboo against them. So, uh, you know, we're now recycling dirty diapers in uh, a number of countries, Holland, France, Japan. They'll be coming to other markets soon as well, hopefully Australia. So dirty and diapers. who has to sort through those? <laughs> A very unfortunate folks. <laughs> um, uh, uh, it's uh, it, that's done primarily through equipment, right? So uh, right. there's a bit of a smell, but it's the machines that suffer the smell the most. Um, we do uh, use chewing gum recycling uh, in Mexico or uh, cigarette butts uh, is one that's, you know, pretty far out there. But, you know, for me, uh, uh, even, you know, things like uh, uh, plastic gloves, you know, it's, it's the things that you really don't expect are possible. And it turns out it all is. It just requires a little bit of R&D. I mean, we have a team of scientists and uh, laboratories and designers and all that. But uh, once, you, once you can figure that out, you get the business model and it's possible. Now, babe, you've come a long way and done some incredible things. What was that initial light bulb moment which made you realize, hang on, I've got to start TerraCycle and I've got to be part of the solution? So for me... It was the first class I took at university was uh, economics. Uh, one of the first classes was economics 101. And the professor comes in, in says, uh, you know, into the uh, lecture hall and asks, frankly, a very appropriate opening question. What is the purpose of business? And the answer she was looking for was maximize profit to shareholders. And, you know, like I get it. But I was like so uninspired by the answer, right? And I started thinking like, for me, what is the role of profit? And I sort of landed on, I think it's an indicator of health, right? If you're profitable, you're gonna flourish and grow and be around for a while. If you're not profitable, the exact opposite will happen. But it's not the purpose. The purpose should be, well, how do you make society or the planet better? And then if you're profitable, you'll do a lot of that and in a big way. And so that sort of got the spark for, say, purposeful business. And then I landed on garbage. Just, you know, it just fascinated me. I mean, garbage is such an interesting topic. Everything we possess, everything you and I possess, everything in our screens right now, will one day belong to a garbage company with not a single exception. I mean, and really say everything, the walls, the floor, the clothing on our back. I mean, everything. And for how big of a concept that is, an industry that will own it all, it's pretty uninspiring what we do with it. We put it in a pile or burn it mostly. What is a green economy in your mind? So I think there's levels, right? I think that, you know, you, you th we say circular economy is a good step towards the green economy. And that's sort of saying, instead of going take, make waste, we're, we're, we're honoring and, tre and treasuring the materials we extract and having them cycle and cycle. But to me, a true green economy is an economy that is intrinsically sustainable which means in balance with what the earth produces. And I say that because circular economy is not necessarily intrinsically sustainable. We have to, to really get to a, uh, to a green economy, the economy has to be regenerative, like circular, but also our appetite has to be in balance with what one planet can produce while taking care of all the other animals and plants uh, uh, that we uh, co-inhabitate with. Where do you think we could be on the journey to that in five years' time? What would a green economy look like then? The biggest thing we can contribute, and I think it's the hardest, I struggle with this as well, is greatly reducing the volume of what we buy. And for context, we today buy 10 times more stuff than we did 100 years ago. Hmm. So it's doable, right? But it's tough. I struggle with this as well. That is the most important. And I start there. It's not recycling or reuse, right? Um, it's, it's purchasing less. And it is because every environmental issue in the world is linked to the act of consumption. While the environmental topic is hyper complicated, right? How do you connect a shampoo bottle to that orangutans are losing, you know, a habitat, right? Through palm oil. That's a complicated connection. That's one example. 
it all distills down to us voting for all that to happen by purchasing. So what are the challenges we're going to face in getting that shift and people actually following that, I guess, hierarchy? So I'll tell you, it's, we're, I mean, and me included, we're addicted to the high of consumerism, right? You know, it's, 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 it's exciting to buy and have a new object show up. It's like gifting ourselves presents all the time. You know what I mean? Like, it's fun. You want to get the object, open it up, press the buttons, you know, taste it, whatever it is. It's fiercely addictive. The problem is this addiction doesn't show up like, say, a drug addiction on our bodies. It shows up on like the greater body, the earth, in places that we don't appreciate or don't see. And so that's why it's a phenomenally difficult topic. It's also very like on the surface, anti-business. So all the stimuli around us are telling us to keep consuming and consume at a greater rate. And so it's exceptionally hard, which is why I'm glad we're talking about it, because there's very few forums you can you can't do. No one's going to do advertisements about, you know, uh, buying less, because, by the way, even the advertisements that have happened about don't buy this jacket, increase the sales of that jacket yeah. underneath. Right. Because you the, a don't buy me commercial makes you increase your perception of quality on that brand. So it is a know, great stuff that Patagonia are doing in that space. It is. And, and I honor it. Yeah, I honor it, but it's also lauded in, in marketing uh, uh, discussions as a great way to increase brand equity value, which mm -hmm. then drives more sales, right? More. So point being is this is not something that, you know, can be promoted by business easily. It has to be a cultural question. And the way to achieve it, I think, in the short term, like what are our steps? The first step should be not like, okay, don't buy and like, good luck. It's like maybe shift from buying cheap, you know, single use disposable to more premium long lasting, like buy one garment that is timeless and you're going to wear it for 20 years, then something you're going to wear three times and throw away. Right. Then once you start, and then maybe you can buy that thing used because if it is timeless and going to last a long time, it's going to be available used. Right. Because it, it has even the opportunity to do that. And then you're slowly nudging your way towards it. Then like, can we get more happiness about interacting with friends, going to a, a play, a concert or things that aren't focused on the idea of extraction, right? And we slowly nudge our way to hopefully waking up in a mode where, you know, we find ourselves buying way less than we ever bought before. Yeah, cool. So there are opportunities for businesses in this future green economy in your mind? There is, yes, there absolutely is. Because, you know, we have to consume, we have to do all these things, right? I just think that the we have to, you know, we have to reshape business to not be in the search of just what is important is how much bigger I am than the year before to maybe how much of the market do I own of that important, you know, idea, right, or, or service or product, right, because right now the challenge is, you know, many businesses are competing for just more, 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 right, and that doesn't work in a finite set of resources. Yeah. Well, Tom, look, thanks so much for sharing your thinking. It has been fascinating. And it's really, it's truly great to hear from one of the real leaders spearheading a future that we all want to be a part of. Now to the fun part. We're going to kick 60 seconds off with you to really get to know what makes you tick. Okay. So you ready? Let's do it. What did you want to be when you grew up? An entrepreneur. Biggest brush with pride. The biggest brush with fame. <laughs> I, um, uh, when I was real young, uh, first time I was drinking, uh, we had a, uh, a New Year's Eve in Miami. My friends and I drank a bit too much and I uh, 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 puked all over what turned out to be Jessica Alba. She was walking into her New Year bash. <laughs> <laughs> she was walking into a New Year bash. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I discovered Red Bull vodka that, 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 uh, that, that evening. I was like, you know, 18 or something, you know, first time we can go out and drink. And that's how I uh, enjoyed my <laughs> New Year's. I got Man, thrown out of the spend 60 quickly. minutes on this story, not 60 seconds. <laughs> oh no, let, let's move on. We'll leave it for the 60 second bit, you know? <laughs> What's more important, a handful of people doing zero carbon perfectly or millions of people doing it imperfectly? The latter by far. Tom, it's truly been a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time for the greener audience and for all Australians who really are trying to do their best when it comes to recycling. I think there's been some great tips here and they'll be all the wise that it's helped, I guess, turn their trash into treasure and what the future of the green economy holds. So thank you very much. 
Now, Tom, it's been a real pleasure to chat with you. Thanks for your time as well. Look forward to the next time we connect. Thank you.